Hello YouTube, Sidekick here with another video about the F4E and in particular air-to-ground attack mode. Today we're going to be talking about laydown mode. Uh, I should point out before anybody gets too excited, uh, the video in the background is just uh, B-roll uh, that I've recorded uh, over the last few days. I'm not dropping Durandals uh, on this video, although I'll get to that eventually. For now, just uh, enjoy the eye candy while I tell you what we are going to do today. Now, I hope to make a few of these videos in this format, so please tell me if you like it. Basically, I want to do two things in these videos. First of all, uh, I want to reduce the in-cockpit procedures to its simplest form, so you can go out and do this with as little trouble as possible. But then I also want to take a little bit of time to explain why it's done that way. Because, at least for me, you need to know, um, you need to know how, how to get it done, but you also, at least for me, I need to know why, uh, both for curiosity, but also kind of for retention. If I remember why it works this way, then it's easier for me to remember how to do it. I find this is particularly true for the F4, because um, it was designed in another era, and the procedures and terminology, which would have been familiar to the pilots at the time, are not exactly transparent, uh, at least to me. So, I'm also going to give you uh, an, uh, some idea, at least, of how the Wizzo should contribute to this style of attack. Um, there is, unfortunately, very little uh, out there about uh, how to Wizzo, uh, except for a discussion of effectively being a Rio in an air-to-air -air situation. And I, I really want to explore what the Wizzo is supposed to be doing in situations other than that. I really think um, that the Wizzo position is essential, although the F4E has been designed to make sure you don't really need it other than whatever jester can provide but i think that's kind of selling this model short so i want to talk a little bit more about how to wizzo and, and encourage lots of people to get in the back seat and see how this works anyways with the whole lay down mode all i have is the heat blur manual that tells you how but not a lot of why so um to do this let's let's start with one on the range and let's just go through uh the very basics and then let me go back to the beginning and talk a bit about why, or, or at least why I think, it works the way it does. And now we're going to make sure that we are on the center pylon. And we want to put the site in air-to-ground mode. And that's the very simple setup. Now we have to go to the bombing computer and do some calculating here. So we're going to set the mode to lay down mode we're going to set the airspeed to 450, we'll set the altitude to 500. Now, the next thing we're going to have to do is set the distance from the IP to the target. And actually, what I'm going to do here is just pick a value um, that basically gives me the right, uh, gives me a, a site depression that I want to use. So, uh, in this case, I'm not actually picking plane on the ground. I'm actually just picking uh, something that gives me a site depression which I can then set on the site. We'll talk a little bit about whether or not, there's, you know, there's other ways you could do this, but from the front seat this is the easiest way to get it done. So, having done all that, we then need to tell Chester, he's the jester, he's going to set up the back seat. Now, the one thing that I'm going to do here, I'm just checking in the back seat to make sure that he's got his number set, and he does. We'll talk a little bit about how to actually do this manually uh, at the end of the video. We'll go through this again. Okay, back in the front seat. Now, one thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn on my autopilot and my altitude hold because I find that is the easiest way to fly level. Now, my only responsibility is to fly on speed and to fly at the target. And when the target appears underneath the reticle, then I'm going to pickle and the bombs are going to hit the target. And it's going to be as simple as that. So here's the targets appearing there at the top of the woods, the white building. It's the hangar. It's going to wait until it's underneath the reticle. And there go the bombs. And there's the result. Okay, with that out of the way, let's go back to the beginning and talk about lay down mode. Uh, what the heck is it? Why is it there? Um, well, it's there to allow you to perform a level flight on a target that you cannot necessarily see or even identify easily. 
so long as you have an initial point that you can see or at least that you can navigate to accurately. Uh, we don't really have anything called laydown anymore because it's really effectively been replaced by CCRP functionality in modern HUD capable jets or actually uh, that would be for you know high and mid-level attacks but for low-level attacks you can also really just use CCIP. Now we didn't have any of those things at the days of the F4 because there was no HUD. So the, the mode was basically designed to be used when you wanted to hit uh, a linear target and lay down a spread of bombs or cluster munitions. Uh, a target like a convoy or a runway or a runway apron. Um, the idea was that you could get aligned on the approach track that was appropriate for the target, you know, straight down the line. And then you could pick an obvious IP back along that track that could easily be identified. Uh, the WISO would guide the pilot to a start point and turn him towards the IP on the right heading. The pilot would establish level flight, fly at the planned speed, and keep aimed at the target. The WISO would call down the numbers to the approaching IP and, and maybe even call the pickle, honestly, so that the pilot could fly his approach as close to level as possible. He might even use the uh, altitude hood uh, hold in the autopilot. I don't know. That's, it worked for me. Now, the manual says that you should pick uh, an IP from which you can see the target, and then you can depress the site to the right level so that it covers the target at the IP. This is a really good idea. Uh, I'm pretty much essential if you're doing this alone. I'm not sure that it was actually essential in the way that the mode was originally developed. See, because if you were flying towards an IP that was easy to see, uh, particularly like a, a linear feature transverse to your flight path, the pilot could simply fly his numbers and the WISO could be looking out the window and as they crossed the stream or the road that was your IP, he could just call pickle and the pilot would be relieved of actually even having to see the target so long as he flew at it according to the numbers. Okay, if you've been watching, you can see in the background, we took off from the runway, and we flew out to what I call the start point, uh, which is the place where we're aligned on our IP and the target beyond that. Now, I just want to show you how to set this up if you're in the back seat uh, as the WISO without having to use the bombing computer. So there are two distances we need to remember. The first is the release range, and that is over on the right-hand side, the right-hand set of knobs. And then there is also the distance from IP to target, which is on the alt range side. Now, the thing to notice is the release range is in feet times 10. The IP distance is in feet times 100. Keep that in mind as we set these dials. Okay, so we have 407 set for the release range. That's 4,070 feet and we have an IP to target range of 5,000. If you go back and look at the bombing computer earlier, you'll see that those were the numbers we came up with. Once you've set those, that is all that the WISO has to do on the weapons release computer panel. And so uh, now we're ready to go back to the front seat and fly this run again. Okay, so here we are flying again. The autopilot is keeping us on altitude, and all I'm having to do is try and keep aimed at the target once I can see it. And it's coming up above the trees there now, so I'm staying on it and just waiting until my pipper is over the target to pickle, which is right there. And now we're dropping the bombs, and there's the result. Okay, that's going to do it for a quick look at the laydown mode in the F4E Phantom. I hope that was useful. I'm uh, working on some more similar kinds of videos for some of the other modes um, to not only figure out how to do them, but maybe try and understand them a little bit as well. I uh, hope you keep enjoying these videos, and for now, this is going to be Sidekick, signing off.